Today, we're gonna to be mudlarking the mighty Mississippi. This particular riverbank is covered with antique glass and relics of all kinds. You really never know what you're gonna find. I think this is my best one of the day. Finally got one. Today, we are on the banks of the Mississippi, or I should say the original banks. What you see on the other side is actually a man-made island, but right here, there are more pieces of glass and relics than I have ever seen before. This actually reminds me a lot of Dead Horse Bay. We have Riley and his sister back there that are gonna be helping us, and we've got Heath right over here in the corner, and we are ready to roll. Let's go see what we can find. Looks like I wasn't the first one to it. Somebody else kicked it up. Brandon. Yeah, look at it, Western Stoneware. That would have probably had a number on it someplace close by, like a five. Yeah. It would have probably been a five gallon turner or a five gallon yeah. jug, jug. The bigger they are, the more likely they are to break, obviously, as they're washing down the river. So that was probably a rather large one. Yeah. Riley's saying it's going to get better the further we go that way, though. Okay. So we just got to keep going. So I found this on the riverbank, but I couldn't tell what it was till I cleaned it up. After I cleaned it off, it says, I am insured in the cotton states. And then it says, Life Best Company. And then it says, Dixie. On this side over here, it's got that really fancy, fancy script, which is what caught my attention. And it says, Cotton States Life Insurance Company. And then it says an address it says north para street maybe i can't make up make out the actual street name and then at the bottom it actually says memphis so that's actually a really cool little token slash tag thing that you would have got from your insurance company there again just by paying attention to looking at how decorative it was i thought it would say something but you never know till you clean it up all right guys we're getting into a seam right here that looks like we're getting a little bit older as we go here's a piece to a bottle let's see what it says something naturally could have been a piece of a grapey co or something like that based off of the color more than likely this is going to be 20s there's a piece of hobble skirt that one's got some acl left on it much newer there again there's more glass here than we will ever be able to pick up guys so if you see me walking over it that's just part of it this was a huge dump site absolutely massive the water line right there though you can see stuff wash right up into it Get right here and pick up. Well, I'm gonna leave it be. It's a hobble skirt. Lots of cool stuff right along the water line, though. You can tell she's been here before. She's focusing in where the good stuff is. I believe she's got silver, they said. I don't know if it's a coin yet or what it is. But let's get over here and see what it is together. I've took off in front of everybody. What do you got? Check it out. Check it out, man. Look, it's a silver, a silver handle to like a hairbrush or something. Oh yeah. Look, it's one of those it. that had wood in the middle. Right there. Oh yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. That's gorgeous. Look at that design. Uh -huh. Wow. Heck wow. yeah. Look that's at that, cool. guys. Hey, that was a good eye on that one. It that went right in. Eye. Got floral decorations on it. Like you said, probably a hairbrush handle. Mm-hmm. Really cool, guys. Heck yeah, good Definitely eye. Definitely Victorian, too, with that design. Oh, Absolutely. Let her, let her hold it. Just pick this piece up right here. You can see it says Chattanooga. That was a Chattanooga Medicine Company. It would have said the woman's tonic on the other side. This is going to be circa 1920s as well. We are trying to move on down, probably to right under that bridge. And we think that's going to be the older section, according to Riley, with a lot more straight side cokes and hutches. And he said he's even seen a couple of things that may date back to the Civil War. So let's get down there and see what we can find. Well, in a matter of steps, guys, it seems like we've got a lot older, a lot quicker. Looks like that would have been a Nashville, Tennessee bottle. I can't tell what it would have been. LLE and Co. If the Eatons are watching, which are some Nashville collectors, they'll probably chime in and let us know what that is. I do not know, but that would have been an awesome bottle for sure. And it would have definitely been time period. The very first bottom to a straight side Coca-Cola from Memphis, and it would have been Amber. This was one of the things that I would love to find. We don't find amber Coca-Colas in Al Alabama very often. They were only in the northern part of the state. So every time I go to Tennessee or areas to search, that's always one of the things I want to find. No matter how common the bottle is to the local collectors, it's just not something that we find in Alabama at all. Check this out, guys. Looks like somebody's been prowling around, kicking stuff out. There's whiskey flasks. Here's a whole seam of Cokes, dude, a whole seam. Look right there, guys. Right there. You see it? These are all amber. 
straight side cokes with the arrows on them. But look at that. Look at they're all excited too. They're like, oh my gosh, let's wash this last time we were here. All I need is one of those holes to make for an amazing day. If not, we're gonna have some amazing whiskey glasses regardless. That's a whole pocket of Coca-Cola's. Look at the uh, imprint and the bud. You can see the layer though. I mean, that layer is gonna have a whole Coke in it. I have no doubt. Look at them up there. Dude, I'm telling you. This looks nuts. Look at that. They're everywhere, guys. Straight side Cokes everywhere. Hey, look, there's a med. Say something. Nope. Slick med. Just says one half pint on the flask. Neck to another straight side Coke. Holy cow, guys. This is a loaded sight. Take a look, guys. Look at this one. Those are nice with that arrow on them. Mm-hmm. Very, very nice bottle. The straight side cokes in here are pretty crazy. I was telling Riley, really appears to me to be a bottler's dump. So, there's more whiskey glasses than it looks like I can even carry. But I'm going to take as many as I can out of here. It's a bottle from 1890. So, check this out. Right amongst the straight side cokes, Riley just plucked out this little Garrett pharmacy bottle. More than likely, this is going to be a local pharmacist. Super cool. Right in this line of bottles though. And you can see, I'm trying to carry as many of these ambers out, turn them into whiskey glasses as I can. But wow, guys. Hey, look, stopper still in that one. You see it? Oh, that's awesome. That's probably Lee and Perrin's, I bet. Yeah, def doesn't say it though. That's cool. I'm gonna go show that to Heath. I'm digging into this straight side Coke scene. Look at that. Oh, so close to being whole. So close. Another one. These are root glass and they have survived. Really miraculous. The top wasn't gone. Still amazing whiskey glasses, guys. One after the other. Look at this. I just flipped this over. That one's broken. But what I was looking at is this one and this one right here. This one looks whole. No chip lip. Does it? One little bitty lip chip. Yeah. That's not enough to hurt that bottle. Uh -huh. That's not a good enough. One there. Look at that, guys. Oh, man, that's, that one's not tumbled very much either. No. That's beautiful. Yeah, that one didn't go through the river wash. This one came straight out of the bank. Beautiful amber Memphis straight side coat, guys. If they're that hole right here in this pocket, that one right there may be hole too. Let's dig it out real quick. Yeah, look. You see it, Riley? Got another, right there. Got another straight side coat coming out. There right we go. Here. Oh, yeah. Wow. Beauty. Man, guys, and these are not tumbled through the river. Mm -mm. They do have little bitty lip issues. So there's one thing to remember, if this is a bottler's dump, like I'm assuming too, the bottlers would reuse their bottles over and over and over again. So they would wash them, refill them, put a new lid on, send them out. This one right here could have been chipped because back then they would use a bottle opener that was made out of metal to take the cap off. That would chip the lip. The bottler wouldn't be able to use it again because if they sent it to the general public, they could cut their lip. They would toss the bottle out with a small lip chip after it had been opened. Mm. So super cool, even with a little lip chip, it's got a story to tell, guys. Yeah. We got another one showing. Y'all ready? Let's see if it's all moving too easy, I can tell. You get to where you pull enough of these bottles, you can tell if it's broke before it comes out of the ground. Still a good whiskey glass material. I mean, look, I'm just stacking them, guys. A chance of being whole, then. It, there's a chance. You gotta think this thing still rolled off of a big old yeah, monstrous bank right it here. flew into a giant river. Did y'all put this here? No. Look at that, guys. All right. Still looking good. All right, I'm going to turn my camera off, get it loose before I turn it back on for you. It was broken, guys. It was a Gayola from Memphis. Nice amber one. But, man, that hurts your feelings. There's a bunch right here. I'm going to dig them out. Oh, yeah. Check this one out, guys. This one was thrown back in with the lid still on it. It was preserved in the bud. Meanwhile, she's got a hem weight up here. Where's it hiding at? Yep, so it's sitting right down in here. Wow, look at there that, guys. Is. It just washed through. That is super cool. Right there on that crevice. She's right that's behind where awesome. we're pulling these bottles out, pulling that too. Yeah, that's super cool. cool. Yeah, it was sitting on top of some bunch of things. Oh, it is just sitting there. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. definitely gonna be an old one. That's crazy. Hey, check it out. That is an Indian head. What y'all think it is? It's in a battery. Is that a battery? Yeah. Hopefully, it's not modern. If y'all get it cleaned up, know what it is. Send us a picture. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Super cool. Oh, yeah. All right, check this out. I got a neck showing. It looks good so far. Let's see if the hill's there. 
Oh, heels there. Oh, got a sheared top right there on that side. Display side's still nice though. Yeah, holy, they're everywhere. Oh man, it's cracked. Yeah, but it's still all the pieces are there. Look, still on the wire. See, it's cracked right there, but that's a neat one too. Yeah, it's still on the power line from the days of telegraphs. That's cool. Take a look, guys. I think this is my best one of the day. Finally got one. Whew. I wasn't gonna leave here till I got one. Absolutely gorgeous bottle. Very excited to have it. I don't see any damage. There again, it's still muddy, but I'm excited to have that guy. May have a little bitty, oh dang, I didn't see it, mud was covered. I'm talking about a little bitty lip nick. Not enough to hurt anything. Gorgeous bottle, absolutely gorgeous. That's a good find right there. Oh, check this out right here. They just cleaned the seal off. Goodwin Bros. I found one of those plates actually in a creek down where we are in Alabama. Goodwin Bros plate, super cool. If you take a look in this ditch right here, there's all kinds of glass. But something stuck out just a second ago. I'm gonna see if I can find it again. I had my hands full of straight side coke, so I walked over it. And I hope that I'm able to find it again. Where'd it go? It's right in here. There it is. Look at that glass. I think, I'm not sure, that this is what will light up under a black light. This is super thick, it'll be hard to turn into jewelry, but I'm gonna take it home and see if my wife can work at it, because if she can, this will be amazing jewelry. Riley, where can everybody find you on social media, just so they know? So I've pretty much put everything under the name Relic Riley, so on any social media that you can think of, anything that would have a video streaming platform or something like that, just type in Relic Riley and I'll definitely pop up. Well, not only does Riley have a channel, so does his sister. I do. So tell everybody where they can find you as well. You can find my content under Live to Explore on all platforms. It might have a period in it for Instagram, but everything else is Live to Explore. L I V T O Explore. So, awesome. Yeah, well, y'all go, y'all go follow him. Oh, that's nice and whole. She just snagged one right there on the surface. Cool. Kind of looks like a Oakland Chemical Company a little bit. If you look right over here, there's a stamped brick. Oh yeah, that is a nice one. Heck yeah, congrats on that one. Nice corker. Yeah. You can see the old bridge pylons right there and right here. We've been searching around them and a lot of the relics are congregating. It's like they get slowed down as they're washing down the riverbank. And this whole little mud flat right here is loaded with straight side coke pieces. What do you see down there, man? How hot is it out here, man? Very early, oh, it's really hot. I mean, we are cooking. It's cooking. This humidity, no joke. Yeah, it is stupid hot. I think this is an early twist off. It's a twist yeah. off, but it's very early twist off. Probably 1930s. That was probably vanilla extract. Yeah. Heck yeah, there's a lot of stuff down in here. That's what it tasted like. Yeah. It tasted vanilla. Hey, we're so thirsty at this point, I'm about ready to drink anything. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We are back home in Alabama now, and we're gonna be working on one of these bottles that we found in the video. We're gonna turn it into a whiskey glass. So what you see here is me about to cut this thing on the saw real quick. A lot of people have seen videos with people heating up strings and then sinking bottles into water and then breaking them from the bottom up to be able to cut a bottle in half. That's never a good idea with antique glass. It is a lot less predictable, which means that you're gonna break far more than you get good. So. I use this tile saw. The most important thing is when the blade touches and when the blade exits. This part is now garbage. And you can see it still has some mud in it from where we found it. Rough around the edges, but it's flat, level, and ready to be worked the rest of the way. What I will tell you guys is for me to finish this lip, I had to build an automated process for many of these things as we sell. This thing is completely hand built by me. Thankfully, I used to be a machinist. So I don't upcycle all of this by myself. We've been doing a lot more this year than what we have in the past, but my good buddy Nick takes the majority of the overflow and workload off of me because of me making videos and editing and working a full-time job. I just don't have the time to get to it. So if you're ever interested in having some of your own bottles cut, reach out to him. He's Antique Bottle Glasses on Facebook. And if you're interested in the ones that we find on our channel that we turn into glasses, they do become available on our eBay store, though they usually do not last longer than 24 hours once they're listed. So be sure you're following our eBay store if you're not already. I'll put a link down in the description. If you enjoyed today's video and you're not subscribed, please do so and we'll catch you guys in the next adventure.